Family dynamics are rarely addressed in modern video gaming, and when they are, it's usually in the background amidst the bombast and bloodshed. It's only been within the last few years that developers have started making quieter, more philosophical games. But despite this proliferation of new themes, it's still rare to find a plain old familial drama. That's why The Novelist by Kent Hudson is daring even for an indie game. It's narrow in scope, featuring only three on-screen characters, the family in question, and a very plain setting, a vacation home off the coast of Oregon. However, the magic of The Novelist is that its minimal scale allows it to really focus on character. By the time you've completed the game's chapters, you really know the members of the Kaplan family intimately, and you're invested in their stories. Dan Kaplan is a budding novelist with a few publications under his belt. However, for the past few weeks, he's been dealing with intense writer's block, and to deal with it, he's brought his family to this secluded little beach house. Dan is an imperfect character with a drinking problem, and he tends to ignore his family more than support it. Dan is the primary protagonist of the game, and it's his choices that most deeply impact his wife and son. In fact, it could be argued that the novelist's core theme is that of managing family life and work life. How do your ambitions affect the people around you? Dan's wife, Linda, is a talented painter who gave up her career when their child was born. Early on, it's revealed that she's grown weary of taking a backseat to Dan's book, and that this is really their last shot as a family. She's contemplating divorce, although she won't say those words specifically. Linda is a strong character with her own dreams, and it's the struggle between the desires of the two protagonists that really lies at the heart of this game. If she's going to sacrifice her life as a painter, she doesn't also want to sacrifice the time and attention she deserves from her husband. Tommy is the young child of Dan and Linda, and he suffers from a learning disability. It's intimated early on in the game that he has trouble reading, but he's also a lonely kid stuck in a house with two adults for an entire summer. He idolizes his father, but he rarely gets to spend time with him, and this makes Tommy's story probably the most emotional. While Dan and Linda make choices that affect their own lives, Tommy is ultimately at the whim of his parents. When the time comes to choose whose needs to satisfy, it's hard not to choose Tommy. The twist on this scenario is that the player doesn't take on the role of any of these characters. Instead, he's a spectral being, a ghost that inhabits the vacation house, whose identity we only get a glimpse of. The ghost travels through power lines via electromagnetic energy, and as such, can zip in between light fixtures this is a fun and enticing mechanic that keeps you out of sight of the family, because if they spot you, they get scared, and you lose some of the options for compromise later in the level. You can also get out and walk around, investigating documents, reading letters and journals, trying to figure out the needs of the people around you. The best way to do this is to read their minds, or to actually enter their memories to discover which decisions will best impact the whole group. Once you've gathered your evidence, you find the object of desire for the person who you most want to support. For example, early in the game, Tommy wants to play a board game with his father, and so you select that board game and see what happens next. If you haven't been spotted, you are then transported to a sort of ethereal place between timelines. Journals of former residents and owners are strewn about the house during this time period, allowing you to really dissect the history of hauntings in this location. It turns out that there are many couples and families that have turned to this house to help rectify their broken family lives. Dan, Linda, and Tommy are not the first. Players who've remained undiscovered can then choose a second object of compromise, allowing a second character to have their desires come true. Whispering your important choices into Dan's sleeping ear, you then witness cutscenes that show the branching storylines and reactions of each character. This repeats for several chapters, weaving an interesting but small tale of the Kaplan family and just how their summer goes. Do Dan and Linda split up? Does Tommy suffer from his parents' bickering and ignorance? Does the book succeed to become a bestseller, or does Linda fulfill her dream of becoming a professional painter? The outcome is dependent on how you, the kindly ghost, guides this family in their time of need.
But the novelist isn't perfection. The environment feels sparse and occasionally unlived in. Memories tend to repeat themselves, and the game is filled with melodramatic cliches. What I'm trying to say is that real detail would have made this game even more enjoyable. I loved every minute of this experience, but I'm not sure how long it's going to stay with me. Dan is the all-too-common self-obsessed writer. Linda is the unsatisfied housewife. Though they are certainly given more dimension the longer you play the game, it does take a while to ramp up and make them feel like original characters. Luckily, the perspective from which the game is told is so unique that it's hard not to fall in love. The apparition's point of view makes up for the majority of the shortcomings from the rest of the experience, and teleporting from one light fixture to the next is just joyous. The Novelist is a game of detection and mystery. It doesn't rely on violence or sex to create drama. Instead, it's a commentary on parenting and family life, something refreshing in the gaming space. You can start haunting the Kaplans in the Novelist on Steam or on other digital distribution platforms.